Welcome to Mikon's hardware. Previously I have already tested Xeon E5 2678v3 in some games and some working tasks. Today in this video I'm going to do detailed testing of this CPU using my NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti graphics card in 13 games at 1080p resolution and some other working related tasks. But first, let's take a look at the detailed hardware specification. Xeon E5 2678v3 I have tested on Klisre X99D8 motherboard. On the motherboard I am using Huanangzhi X99F8 BIOS with a Turbo Boost Unlock. 32 gigs of RAM, 4 sticks, 8 GB each, G-Scale DDR4-3200, CL14. Unfortunately, with the Xeon E5 2678v3, Maximum supported RAM speed is DDR4-2133. Still, I was able to tighten the RAM timings to CL11. As I have already mentioned, for the graphics card I am using my NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition, Samsung 860 EVO 1TB SSD drive, Corsair HX 1000W power supply. Ryzen 5 3600 was tested on Gigabyte B450M TS3H motherboard, with the same 32 gigs of RAM, 4 sticks, 8 GB each, DDR4-3400. Yes, these G-Skill modules rated at DDR4-3200 CL14 are happily working at DDR4-3400 CL14. Before I go to the test results, it's important to mention that all Ryzen 5 3600 test results were taken from the Xeon E5 2640v3 video. After that video Windows was updated, a few games received a few updates, and Nvidia has released a new version of their driver. That's why Ryzen 5 3600 results shown in this video might be 1, 2 or 3% lower than in the reality. Unfortunately, I have already delivered the Ryzen 5 3600 computer to my customer and I'm not able to retest all these games all over again. Still, I believe it will be interesting to see the comparison even though the Ryzen 5 3600 results might be slightly wrong. That being said, let's move to the test results. The first tester game is Battlefield 4. Here, Ryzen 5 3600 is 25% faster when it comes to 0.1% low FPS and 17% faster when it comes to 1% low FPS. Average FPS is almost identical, but we see that Xeon E5 2678 V3 is not able to max out RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p. Battlefield 5. This is a much newer title, it's able to use multiple CPU cores and it's utilizing DirectX 12 API. Here, Xeon E5 2678 with its 12 cores and 24 threads is slightly faster than 6-core Ryzen 5 3600. Once again, it's important to mention that this result of Ryzen 5 3600 might be slightly wrong. After I have conducted this result, Battlefield 5 got an update, Windows was updated and Nvidia drivers were updated as well. CSGO or Counter-Strike Global Offensive 0.1% and 1% low FPS values are almost identical, Ryzen 5 3600 is slightly ahead. Average FPS is significantly better with Ryzen 5 3600, 458 FPS compared to 331 FPS with Xeon E5 2678v3. Even though the difference is more than 100 FPS, I really doubt that anyone who has 300 plus FPS will be able to spot the difference. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Even though this is a quite well optimized title and it's able to use multiple CPU cores, Ryzen 5 3600 is significantly faster when it comes to 0.1% low FPS. 111 FPS compared to 81 FPS, which means Ryzen 5 was 35% faster. Assassin's Creed Odyssey – one more very demanding but not very well optimized title. Here, by minimal FPS, Ryzen 5 was 21% faster, on average is just 3% faster. Monster Hunter World this is not a game I enjoy playing, that's why I have stopped at the first scene where I supposed to hide in the bushes and decided to run around. Even though it's not very representative test, we still see that 0.1 and 1% low FPS values are much better with Ryzen 5 3600 processor. Shadow of the Tomb Raider – one more very demanding but this time very well optimized game. Still, even though Xeon E5 2678v3 has doubled the cores compared to Ryzen 5 3600, it's losing 22% minimal FPS and 10% average FPS to Ryzen 5 3600. Red Dead Redemption 2 – one more very demanding title but not as well optimized as Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 
This game is also known to favor Intel CPUs over AMD. Thus, Xeon 5-2670HV3 is demonstrating slightly better results than Ryzen 5 -3600. In particular, minimal FPS were 7% faster, average FPS 3% faster. F1 2019 This is a fast-paced game. Its performance really depends on the memory speed as well as CPU cache. Here, Ryzen 5 3600 is significantly faster than Xeon 5 2670HV3. When it comes to minimal FPS, it's 21% difference. When it comes to average FPS, it's 15% difference. Not a huge win for the Ryzen processor, but a significant one. GTA 5 Very old title, which is extremely not optimized. Even with RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p and almost maximum graphical settings, we are GPU bottlenecked. Both of these CPUs are demonstrating almost identical results. Still, Ryzen 5 3600 was slightly better. Ostrim. This fine Ukrainian game is still under development. Right now it's able to utilize up to 2-3 CPU cores, and here, Ryzen 5 3600, which has significantly higher CPU clock frequency, is defeating its opponent. 0.1% low FPS is 13% better, and average FPS is 26% better. Astroneer. One more very not optimized title. Here, Ryzen 5 3600 has 43% better 0.1% low FPS, 38% better 1% low FPS, and 21% better average FPS. In general, if you play a lot of these old or not very well optimized games, I would strongly recommend you to stay away from the Xeon CPUs with the low CPU clock frequency. And the last tester game, Dirt Rally 2. Even though the difference between the two CPUs is not dramatical, Ryzen 5 3600 is still 11% faster by 0.1% low FPS, 16% faster by 1% low FPS, and 3% faster on average. Now let's take a look at the combined results. On average, Ryzen 5 3600 was 25% faster than Xeon E5 2678v3 when it comes to 0.1% low FPS. 1% low FPS was 10% better with Ryzen 5 3600. In the games which have built-in benchmark, minimal FPS value is 15% better with Ryzen 5 3600. This means that overall gaming experience with Ryzen 5 3600 will be much smoother. And on average, Ryzen 5 3600 was 9% faster than Xeon E5 2678v3. In the previous video, I have compared Xeon E5 2640v3 with Ryzen 5 3600. There, I found that 0.1% low FPS was 31% better with Ryzen 5. On average, Ryzen 5 was 13% faster than Xeon E5 2640v3. Xeon E5 2678, which has 4 extra cores compared to E5 2640v3, slightly improves these values. Ryzen 5 3600 is 25% better than Xeon E5 2678v3 when it comes to 0.1% low FPS, and just 9% better when it comes to averages. Overall, Ryzen 5 3600 is definitely a better gaming CPU than both of these Xeons. But let's move on to the productivity benchmarks. Starting with a pure synthetic CPU Z. As expected, single core performance is better with Ryzen 5 3600, multi core performance is better with the Xeon E5 2678v3. Cinebench R15 and R20. Here, I was expecting a bigger gap between Xeon E5 and Ryzen 5. Even though Ryzen 5 has just 6 cores and Xeon E5 has 12 cores, Ryzen 5 is almost catching up with the Xeon E5. Xeon E5 2678 took 1 minute 43 seconds to finish Corona 1.3 benchmark. Ryzen 5 3600 completed the same test in 2 minutes 19 seconds. Blender with BMW 27 took 3 minutes 10 seconds with the Xeon E5, 3 minutes 55 seconds with Ryzen 5. Blender with Fishy Cat took 5 minutes 5 seconds with the Xeon E5, 5 minutes 48 seconds with Ryzen 5. Here we can see that even though Xeon E5 has twice as much CPU cores as Ryzen 5, the difference between these two CPUs in rendering tasks is about 30%. Nova Bench believes that Ryzen 5 3600 is a slightly better CPU than Xeon E5 2678v3, while V-Ray is demonstrating better results with the Xeon E5. Almost 13,000 rays rendered compared to 10,500 with Ryzen 5.
One more interesting comparison is video production. Here I test DaVinci Resolve and Handbrake. To test DaVinci Resolve, I have used Puget Systems DaVinci Resolve version 0.61 4K test. Ryzen 5 3600 scores 870 points, while Xeon 52678 V3 gets only 808 points. Handbrake video conversion from 4K file created by DaVinci Resolve to 1440p for YouTube upload with the Xeon E5-2678 completed in 2470 seconds, while Ryzen 5 3600 completed the same task in 1979 seconds. Thus we can see that extra CPU cores are not really helping Xeon E5-2678 V3 to take on Ryzen 5 3600. CPU core frequency as well as IPC is very important in video production. Yes, when using handbrake all 12 cores of Xeon E5-2678 were not 100% utilized, but I don't think anyone would care about how much of your CPU is utilized. What people would care is how much time it takes to convert this or that video from this or that format. And the last test in this video is 7-zip compression and decompression. With the two extra memory channels and six extra CPU cores, Xeon E5-2678V3 is significantly faster than Ryzen 5 3600 when it comes to compression. Decompression, though, is almost identical between these two CPUs. In real world, I really doubt that you will be able to spot any difference between these two CPUs when working with 7-zip. And finally, let's take a look at the combined performance between these two CPUs after those productivity tests. On average, Ryzen 5 3600 happens to be just 5% slower than Xeon E5 2678V3, which demonstrates how much better Ryzen 5 3600 actually is. With just two memory channels and six CPU cores, it's able to provide almost identical productivity performance as Xeon E5 2678V3 with four memory channels and 12 CPU cores. In some tasks, such as DaVinci Resolve and Handbrake, Ryzen 5 3600 even defeated Xeon E5 2678V3. I happen to have four identical, very cheap DDR4-2133 CL15 SK Hynix memory modules. That's why I have decided to pick four different games and validate if performance will be different between expensive G-Skill DDR4 modules and very cheap SK Hynix DDR4 ECC registered modules. Unfortunately, I was not able to tighten the memory timings with SK Hynix modules as much as I was able to with G-Skill modules, but overall timings are pretty much comparable. With G-Skill I have got 11-11-11-22, with SK Hynix I've got 12-11-11-27. ADA64 memory test demonstrates that read speed is slightly better with registered ECC memory, while memory latency is slightly better with G-Skill modules. It's not surprising since the memory timings are slightly better with the G-Skill modules. To make this comparison a bit more interesting, I also test the same four games with hyperthreading disabled. Thus, there will be three results. Default, hyperthreading disabled, and with cheap ECC registered CL15 memory modules. Battlefield 5 doesn't really see any difference between these three configurations. Still, disabling hyperthreading does not give any extra performance at all. The performance even slightly decreases. F1 2019 also does not show any meaningful differences. Still, registered ECC memory is able to provide slightly better results, probably due to memory read speed. Disabling hyperthreading is once again reducing overall performance. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the difference between these three configurations is so small that it's not possible to make any meaningful conclusion. And the last game, CSGO or Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Here, disabling hyperthreading might slightly increase gaming performance. Overall, though, performance between these three configurations is almost identical. After all of these benchmarks and excessive testing of both of the CPUs, I can make the following conclusion. First, if you have enough money and you can afford buying Ryzen 5 3600, then go for it. It's a much better CPU, and even though it has just 6 cores and 2 memory channels, it's beating Xeon E5 2678V3 in games and providing almost identical productivity performance. In some instances such as DaVinci Resolve and Handbrake, it's even able to beat Xeon E5.
If you are not happy with Ryzen 5 3600 performance, you always have an option to swap your CPU to something like Ryzen 9 3900X or Ryzen 9 3950X. These two CPUs will be able to beat everything in the Xeon E5 V3 and V4 lineup. On the other hand, if you have restricted budget or in your region Ryzen 5 CPUs are extremely overpriced, then Xeon E5 2670V3 is a very good budget alternative. Right now you can buy Xeon E5 2670V3 with 100x99TF motherboard and 32 gigs of DDR3 ECC registered memory for about 250-260 euros. For a combination of Ryzen 5 3600, semi-decent B450 motherboard and 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 memory, you would have to spend around 320 euros. The difference is not that big, but it's significant. This extra money can be spent on a better graphics card or an extra SSD drive. Additionally, you do not have to invest into expensive DDR4 or DDR3 memory with the Xeon E5 2678V3. Cheapest DDR3 or DDR4 memory will be just fine. But it's highly recommended to tighten your memory timings as much as possible. Personally, I like both of the CPUs and I don't think they are competing with each other. You shall always take into account all possible factors, such as shipping cost, import charges, availability at the second-hand market, warranty, delivery, and of course which games you play, which programs you use, what tasks you perform with your computer. Do your calculations and make your decision. For now though, that's all I have for you. I hope it was interesting, I hope I have helped someone. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.